you know, when I drop in the steel powder, it is it makes some sound, or there is some gradation. It is kind of the like setting these gradations, like in a crying. It is like in a kind of vibrations. Yeah, my name is Kim uh, Jong Koo. We moved all the canvases um, upstairs and put plastic down on the floors and kind of began a, really turned the gallery into a studio space. And it became this kind of um, ad hoc event as part of the exhibition. Um, as people wandered into the gallery, they could really kind of participate and watch this whole process of creation going on. So that became a really exciting component. You know, from the beginning of the work, when, when, when he's using gravity to, to create the, the streaming effect, to the whole natural process of oxidation that goes into the steel powder, mixing salt in with the um, adhesive material that bonds the steel powder to the canvas. There were a lot of wonderful a reactive moments in the creation of the steel powder painting. I can recall the best moment. Jungu looks to me and says, yeah, I think my paintings need to breathe. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to move them outside. And, you know, this is very untypical museum practice to take a work and put it outside. Over the weekend, it began to, uh, uh, there was a pretty big snowstorm and snow and ice a few days later. They were all covered in a, in a beautiful sheet of ice that we had to then thaw them out before moving them back into the gallery. I thought this was a really beautiful process of this kind of elemental interaction. So that goes, I think, to the very heart of a lot of the, 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 uh, the, the concepts that are being explored in this work. The, the sometimes people ask to me, about the, you know, my writings, what, ki what kind of text? It is no happy story, it is sad story. Ku kotteri param, kariwojo, ku kokoshi, teang, jota. Hanopshi, marobshi, ku yuru, joki. He mumbles in Korean, which is sometimes, you know, it's very poetic. And then sometimes it's kind of casual, sort of talking to himself or talking to the canvas because it's oftentimes he treats the canvas as a living, you know, thing that he kind of opening a discussion with it or having conversation with it. So I can tell, I can kind of see that he's doing it while he's writing a calligraphy. And then he kind of deformed it by dropping the steel powder and creating a layers of meaning, you know, besides layers of uh, steel powder. Sometimes I'm big trouble with my painting. I made a, a, one line, big line, and then after that, my painting say, oh, Joku, too much desire to make it a good artwork. Don't, don't like this. The significance of steel and saying steel powder is, is what steel conjures up in our minds. Of, you know, our industrial society is, is premised on on steel, it's like the, it's, it's, it's kind of the quintessential solid material of you know, industrial civilization. And then to transform that into this kind of soft, um, very delicate, very sensitive material, yeah. you know, and master that in, in, in the way that Jonga does on these paintings is, is a very poetic act. I've never seen the artist working in person. I always you know, see the ending result. It's wonderful to see and see the whole process from the beginning that how he, you know, deal with this steel powder and glue it and then the canvas lifting up and down and, and then to see the end result. It's my name, Kim Jong Koo. I want to make it a big accent, the last name is Koo. That is KU. <laughs> Slowly getting to understand what is my big issue myself. How can I measure the biggest and smallest in the world? So 
that is starting to grind the skin. As the, the date of the artist talk and the opening began to approach, Jungu began to talk with me about um, the possibility of actually performing the mobile landscape as part of the opening rather than um, doing it you know, as an installation, but more as a kind of uh, spontaneous performance, which is, I think, a really beautiful connection with the history of calligraphy and writing in East Asia, because it is essentially you know, an extension of your body, of your breath, of a very performative act. I think this was a beautiful way of animating this exhibition. This is genius ideas of uh, creating a landscape painting that when we, when we really look at the Goat Mountain, we are the small, you know, smallest being in front of the big, immense mountain. But here, you will see the mountain becomes small. We are the bigger one. And also, this kind of bring a very interesting question who we are when he, um, you know, put the ending dot on it, it's kind of give it a life and then, and give it a life that a will that this world can change and transform it itself throughout this kind of interaction with air, interaction of breathing of the viewers and then kind of, you know, movement of the people and it's kind of transforming and then kind of to create a different meanings. Taking something that's supposed to be so permanent like steel and making, turning it into a very ephemeral installation that eventually will just, you know, be destroyed. Yeah. Or it will just, it will never exist again. It's fleeting. Mm -hmm. 그, 그것이 태양. 